And I, and I love when the prophecies, when the prophecies, the word of God, as his majesty says that, God and history shall judge. So when the word of God and um, the the evidence of history, the evidence of not just his story, but the evidence of the story, the facts, you know, do the facts, you know, do the math and check the facts and do the math. Now let's just wind this, wind this back to the beginning of this clip. We're going to go through this, the main point by point. Anton LaVey is a recluse who grants no interviews and makes no public pronouncements. The affairs of the Church of Satan are now overseen by two people, his daughter, Zena LaVey, and Mr. Nicholas Schreck, founder of the Werewolf Order of Satanism. Zena LaVey and Nicholas Schreck are the chief spokespersons for the Church of Satan, and they are the two people you will see me confront during this video. Now, let's just pause there for a moment. You're going to see Wolverine. We, we call him Wolverine. Now, remember the wolf. He talks about the wolf, um, Nicholas Shrek. Remember there was a movie called Shrek, popular movie. Everybody likes it. You know what I'm saying? You can't say nothing bad against Shrek. You know what I'm saying? Even this Shrek because people have been programmed to love this Shrek. Now, what's uh, Anton LaVey's daughter named? Zena. Zena, that name rings a bell, Zena. Remember how popular that show was? You know what I'm saying? So when when the interviewer here asks, um, well, tell us about some of the other Hollywood people besides uh, so-called uh, Sammy Davis, you understand, um, uh, so-called Jew, you understand? Um, one um, particular uh, sister here in the society um, said that they thought he was a Jew, but perhaps people not really understanding things, you know, like the country bumpkin nature of American Pie, they didn't really recognize that perhaps that star that he was wearing wasn't a Jewish star, but actually was was a, a satanic pentagram. But be that as it may, they point him out, they point out um, Jane Mansfield, and then they point out um, uh, Marilyn Monroe. And then when the interview, you're going to see it in a moment, the interview is going to ask, um, well, tell us about a couple other people. And he's like, well, you know, for the hysteria, you know what I mean? They say, for all the hysteria that's going on, Zena says that, you know, the Amazon, was, was the queen of the, uh, what do they call her? Queen of the night? So Amazon, uh, Zena, Zena, what they call Zena? Zena is um, warrior princess. You understand? So notice that these people's give thanks, these people's names, you understand? At the time, remember, this is the 80s, and this is probably right after the Church of Satan was established in California, and probably also right after um, um, uh, Reagan went from being governor of California, probably one of the reasons why Schwarzenegger, German, you know, coming from that same root that these people represent. They're against Judeo-Christian values, and they're seeking to promote um, true European culture. You understand? And the true European culture is all this dark shit. Is all this is all this um, so-called Gothic and and neo-Nazi and 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 then they have a brand that they that they shop to these um, lost sheep to the black folks. You know what I'm saying? And you can see for all the skull and bones. This is part of what we mentioned in the first part is the covenant, the covenant that they've made that these artists and these other people, lost sheep, have made and are making with um, hell and, and, and death, with death and hell. And it's not just, you know what I mean? It's not just the so-called uh, rappers, Let's not let, let, let's let's make no mistake about it. You know, you know, let's be clear on this. It's not just the rappers. You understand? Know it's even a lot of these preachers and pastors and and then the rest and your politicians as well. You understand? Know who have made this covenant? You understand? Know with death and with hell. Remember, we we are in the valley of decision, but also this valley is the valley of the dry bones. So it should not surprise you the connection, dry bones, skull and bones, covenant with death and hell, covenant with these Satanists that a lot of these so-called pseudo-black um, artists 
and the rest of them who sold their souls have made a covenant. So let's hear some more about this agenda here and from the interviewer. Whether or not you believe in a literal devil, you should be concerned about the plans of LeVay and Shrek to establish a satanically ruled society. This interview was not a debate with my countering the viewpoint put forth by the Church of Satan. The purpose of this video was to divulge information regarding the agenda of the Church of Satan, facts that until now have been cloaked in rumor and contradiction. Hmm. Uh, Jane Mansfield. Was Jane Mansfield a follower and or a lover of your father? Yes, she was a member of the Church of Satan. I will not discuss my father's private life because I don't think it's anybody's business. <laughs> Notice that, if you will, before we get, get go forward in this, that what a dutiful daughter, what a dutiful um, Satanist daughter of a Satanist father. She's not going to discuss her father's private life or personal business, even though he's had a lot of these, you know, flings and affairs and the free sex and all this kind of evil shit they be doing. But but look how dutiful, you know what I'm saying? You find pastors and preachers, you know what I'm saying, whose own children who are not as dutiful and not as respectful and not as as committed to the work. You understand? Like you have these black um, singers who get their gift from the Lord in the church to sing the the good news or the, or the, the, the true gospel, not this praise and worship, this, this, this placebo Christianity, but to preach the gospel, they get their gift in the church, and what they do, they take it out there, and then they start singing all of these um, um, neo-Satanist, you know, new kind of Satanist songs, you understand, in order to corrupt, you understand, to corrupt John's people. The same thing was the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam was the same thing, to corrupt the people who they could not curse. They could not curse us. In the 60s, they could not curse us in the 50s. They could not curse us in 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 the 40s or in the 30s. But after the march on Washington, after the lost sheep marched down to Pharaoh, you understand? And that's what the Bible says: "Woe to those who go down to Egypt." Look at D.C. carefully. D.C. is made on the ancient Egyptian, on a spiritual Egyptian. Template. Marilyn Monroe, what was the connection with Marilyn Monroe? That was an affair that the two of them had when they were both very young and were relatively unknown. It just so happened that both of their lives took uh, off in a direction that, you know, garnered some fame. But uh, just pause it right there. She has some symbol. The symbol that she has, if you take a a good look at the symbol right here, the symbol that she has right here, right? That symbol, if we um, would zoom in on it, if we get a little closer into that symbol, right, it looks like an Ankh type, it looks like an Ankh type symbol, right? Let's see if we can zoom in again right here. It looks like an Ankh type, type symbol, right? If you see the symbol, Looks like an Ankh type symbol that she's wearing. You know, you have to pay attention, pay careful attention. You know, the type style makeup. You see this style makeup, the Gaga, and a lot of even the black. You know, the black entertainers also are adopting even the blonde wig. You know, saying this is all. These are all signs. These are what they call tells. These are all significant tells because they are living in the image. Of the beast. See, they identify themselves with a beast in their religion, with the wolf. You understand? This is a significant um, symbol and symbology that they identify themselves with, and it will come up in just a moment when um, Shrek, when Shrek speaks. At the time that they had this affair, they were both very young, late teens, early 20s. Sammy Davis Jr. 
he's been pictured uh, right. worshiping at one of your father's altars, wearing a pentagram. Was he at a time a follower of the church? At a time. Uh, now that's that's curious too, because some say that. Um, Sammy Davis repented it or he felt bad about it. I don't know how much he really repented or what he did to repent it, um, you know, getting involved with that and the things he had to do. I think that there are some some um, some documents, you know, that are pretty reliable concerning what he said about that period of time in his life. It's no doubt that he was an experiment, seeing that their church and their activities were still out the gate, that he was an experiment. And it's very clear that since Sammy Davis, you know, in the Church of Satan, that they have gotten um, much much more, um, they, they've gotten more better on getting other niggas and lost sheep to do their bidding. But it's very clear that they don't have no love for the niggas or anything that, the niggas really should be standing for, you know what I'm saying, but are using, you know, are using them. So this is, this is, this is not a conspiracy theory, you know what I'm saying, you're hearing it from the pale horses, you're hearing it straight out of the pale horses' mouth. Just you know, I could pause another picture, but you could, you could just see the sheep, the sheep ready for the slaughter. Yeah, look, you can just see the sheep for the slaughter. You know, does he look happy? Do any of your idols look happy? Do they look happy? You want to be happy like he's happy? Mm, you've been one. And then there are other actors as well. Because of the for home, for example, home. Well, because of the recent hysteria. We... Is, is, that, is that interesting? It's almost like they, they telepathically communicate it. Let's just, let's just rewind that one more time. Well, because of the home, for example, home. Well, you said because of the, watch her watch continue that thought. Recent hysteria we've seen, I'm not going to put there. There is a on every field of endeavor in architecture. Well, well, oh, you, 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 you blame it on hysteria, but in fact, uh, if, if they're a follower of Satan, uh, should they not be willing to step forward and say so? I mean, well, that's what we're embarking on now. Well, what the nine See, see, oh, hold on for a moment now. A couple of things right here. And see, so you have to be scrutinized. And get these videos, you know, watch it, you know, once or so. And then, you know, check it out again and, and study it. Because um, when you back it up right here, there's a more important point. That, there's a more important point that's being made right here that the interview is trying to find out who else, like who, you know, how many people down, like trying to do a survey or a poll or something like a census on who's who in the Satanistic clique. But um, there's something that, that, that Shrek says. Listen to what Shrek says. Every day, he says, there's people, they have Satanists in every um, field of endeavor, architecture, science. He could have gone on if he was al allowed to. He might have, you know, music, movies, entertainment, politics, all sort of thing, your local PTA, you know, the police, you know, all over the place. But the interviewer is more, I guess, looking for, I'm not going to say salacious information, but, you know, who else? Like, what name, what famous people? Well, you, 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 you blame it on hysteria, but, in fact, uh, if, if they're a follower of Satan, 
should they not be willing to step forward and say so? I mean, well, that's what we're embarking on now. Well, we what the 90s are going to see is a massive rise of Satanism. People are going to come out of the shadows and reveal themselves as thoroughgoing Satanists. Because what we're seeing now is the death struggle between the Judeo-Christian idea and archetype and the more ancient Satanic archetype. And that's a that's an important point that um that Shrek makes. Shrek. This is not the cartoon Shrek. This is the real Shrek. This is the Shrek that inspired the cartoon. You know what I'm saying? But this is the real Shrek. You know what I mean? Um, even that whole thing with Zena, her name, Anton LaVey's daughter Zena, and then the show Zena, and this guy Shrek, and the cartoon character Shrek is 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 no accident. You know, is no accident. And even Wolverine, you know, the X Men and all of that coming out and the identification with the with the wolf. But he makes a point here that we want to focus your attention on right here. Let's get right there. He says, um, well, what the 90s are going to see is a massive rise in Satanism people, and, and Satanism people are going to come out of the what? Shadows, slim shadies, the shades, the shedim. The shedim are going to come out and what? And reveal themselves. You know, and and all the preparation for this has been done with the movies. If you look at a lot of the movies over, you know, the past, um, what, 20, 20 or 30 years, you know, increasing. In fact, we were just watching, a, a, saw a clip of, oh, this is Grimm, this show on NBC Grimm, you know, where there's these shapeshifters. They're showing you these shapeshifters, and then the plot's, are connecting to real points of history, you know, dealing with, I think this episode was on Adolf Hitler, you understand, where he was a shapeshifter, but some people don't have the eyes to see, so they can't really see. They'd be shifting in front of you, but some people who are spiritual or sensitive to it pick up on it, other people don't. But more and more, this is where it connects to this hybrid thing, which this documentary and some others talk about, where you're seeing Beyonce music, Kanye's music, Jay-Z's music, where they, uh, you know, first it was the robot thing, you know, the metropolis, the, the matriarch, the matriarch, the matriarchopolis, the matriarch apocalypse. Wow, check that out. The matriarch apocalypse. You know what I'm saying? Work on it before I and I do, you know, if, if you know what, what that's about, the matriarch apocalypse is what's going on, but really it's based on Metropolis, right? The movie um, Metropolis. Now they did the robot thing for a while. Everybody in that video were doing a little robot hybrid thing or synthetic person, you know, artificial person kind of a thing in that video for all that CGI graphics and everything. Now, we're seeing more of this beast, the reality, you know, morphing into the beast, so forth and so on. But what he says here about the 90s are, are very interesting. If those of us who were old enough and lived through the 90s, we could really see how Satanism, you know, and Satanism people were coming out of the closet. And, and to use that coming out the closet thing, you know, the whole homosexual GBLT and the Satanistic movement, you have to see how they converge, how they're in, in proverbialists and probably literally speaking, they're in bed together. They're in bed together. No doubt you know that, you know, San Francisco, L.A., you know, that's spiritually Sodom. New York is Gomorrah. D.C. is spiritual Egypt. You understand? D.C. is spiritual Egypt. And on a level, you know, Atlanta and that region and the South and South Carolina and Georgia is, is a little bit like Ethiopia on a certain level when we, when we lay the, the, the geography and, 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 the, and the, the topology you know the the types, but that's a, that's that's a, that's another level right there. But just make a note of this about the 90s. So this was roughly the 80s. Reagan at that time, 
is president. And we know Reagan and Nancy, you know, she was all into the occult, probably also a member. That's why they didn't want to go into all of that. Remember, Reagan was the one that um, allowed the Church of Satan to get its first rise in California. That's where the first Church of Satan is. Since then, it's been on. You know what I mean? And everything like Harry Potter and, and all of these like vampire movies, the new kind of vampire, the sexy kind of vampire, you know, all these kind of little signs and symbols and everything else is another way of them revealing themselves. So stop acting like you're surprised when they're revealing themselves when you know good and well what this is all about. What you have to do is decide whether you're going to receive, you understand, the covenant of life in our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Joshua, to the glory of the King of Kings, or if you're going to accept the mark of the beast. There's no really middle way. You know, if you're on the fence, you get split in two because you're a hypocrite. You're going to have to decide. Satanism, people are going to come out of the shadows and reveal themselves as thoroughgoing Satanists. Because what we're seeing now is the death struggle between the Judeo-Christian idea and archetype and the more ancient satanic archetype. Now, that's also very important what he says right there. We also have to make this note because we were speaking about um, Jai's star and uh, the astral theology and what astrology really means and, and astronomy and how we need to comprehend that within the true hermeneutic interpretation of the Bible and not get caught up on all this um, placebo and pseudo and counterfeit Christianity that tells us if we now look at God's word the way it was meant to look at and recognize the heavens as Jah's clockwork, not for no kind of horoscopes or, you know, stupid shit like the Gentiles be doing, but in God's way. You know, the heavens is his witness. And we're working on a book, a new manuscript. Um, we call it commentaries, you know, commentaries and annotations to um, uh, witness uh, of the stars um, by E.W. Bullinger. It's a very, very good book from the 18... 18-something, 18 1800s and something. Um, but that book right there shows how the heavens actually are telling the story that we have in the Bible. But what has, what has happened is that even the Satanists in more ancient times or previous times had corrupted that into what you call your, your zodiac or your zodiac and then added on to that the whole psychic phenomena and the horoscope and the tarot card reading and everything else based on that astronomos or astronomy and astrology. But astrology in itself, when we get to the root of the truth, and that's what we dealt with in a previous video, it's just interesting even to us as we reason on this right now, how all these things are connecting. Because we were just working on this, and, and now we watch this video, this portion here again, and we said we, we're going to record this while it's, while it's still fresh with us. Um, and in the manuscript we're working on, there's a particular scripture where it says um, he should try it on the lion, the young lion, and and uh, the the young lion and the dragon. So he like tried on the foot. And when we look at the royal Amharic, it doesn't say um, uh, young lion. It actually says uh, tequila. You know, saying that tequila is 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 if I'm correct, it's the it's the wolf, right? It's the wolf. So when we talk about wolf and sheep clothing, and we properly do the hermeneutic or the, the turgum, the interpretation of that, it's these, it's these sell-out so-called lost sheep folk who, who sell their souls for silver and gold and for the world because of the love of the world and all that's in the world, you know, and they turn their backs on the Father and then they come back in the community and try to appeal to our so-called blackness, really appeal to our ignorance, you, because we're more than black, you understand? We're Beta Israel. We're the once lost but now found Ethiopian Hebrews. We're more than just so called black. You understand? You know, so that too, 
see, they, they keep you in that so-called generalized blackness. You understand? Because this video also talks about the color black. You understand how it's used by the occult. And we also have to recognize if the color black is used by the occult and the Satanists, then black people are also used by the occult and the Satanists. So we're going to make that link about the wolf, but, 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 but roll tape. We feel that the best way to change the world into a satanic arena is by having strong individuals in different areas do their own individual work. Uh, that's a that's a that's an important point. It's, it's a kind of a principle of any kind of organization. You know, it's not just uh, one thing these these evil doers do. They recognize they recognize basic organizational principles, and they have the discipline, the sticking power to stick to it. It's like what Christ said to his people: If you're and to I and I, if our righteousness, if our zeal does does not um, exceed that of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, we will in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what he's saying here is very important. He says, Shrek says that the best way to change the world for the, and, and their way of looking at the satanic agenda is by having strong individuals in different areas and do their own individual work. You understand, in order to get the best sort of um, results out of it. But you can take the so called satanic out of that and say the best way to change the world or overcome the world to the kingdom of the King of Kings and His Christ is by having strong, spiritually strong individuals in different areas, you know do their own work, their own individual. But that's Bible. Bible says stay in the calling in which you're, you've been called. It said the gifts and the calling of God are about repentance. So many folks are coming to the, to the light of the King of Kings and his Christ, and they still, have to, they still have to repent. They still have to change their mind. They still have to become conformed to our black Lord and Savior in spirit and in truth. But they have these gifts. And many of you all have different gifts and talents and different callings and may not think that, well, how does what, what, what I like to do, you understand a particular skill that you have, you understand that may not be teaching the gospel or preaching the gospel or ministry, but it might be something else. It might be in technology. You might be a, you might be a, 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 a engineer. You might be a farmer. You might be... Um, you know, a, a, a manager, you know, you might be a, a craftsman, you know, skill with some sort of craft, you understand? All of that, you understand, is needful and it is necessary. So when we look at these ways they use like Halegian dialectics, problem, reaction, solution, these are just principles like, um, like friction to the proper elements causes a fire, a spark that causes fire. It's like Prometheus. They stole fire from the gods. Now the gods are walking around in darkness because the enemy stole the fire from them, and now they think the fire is a bad thing. You understand? You know that 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 knowledge, that technology, or that or that structural discipline and principle. And you're gonna hear Shrek speak about it, and this is why they've been able to have such success within a short period of time because in their world they are true believers and unfortunately you understand there's still much more work to be done in the kingdom of the king of kings and his christ to get up to speed and we have but a short time so we have to redeem the time because the days are evil By joining the church of satan you enter into the possibility going into the higher echelons of the Church of Satan. But if you join it, <laughs> if Slick Willie, you say you enter, you the possibility, the possibility, answer the probabilities. If you join, you will you make it all the way up. No, it's 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 it's, it's the possibility. What's been happening to Nicholas Shrek since the last time we met? Well, we're entering phase two of Radio Werewolf's operation for World Dominion. He was saying um, they're entering what he said phase two.
of uh, what radio, werewolf, airways, some mumbo jumbo. The main thing I caught in that was where or werewolf, the werewolf, you understand, or the werewolf. That's that's what I picked up, and then I thought about Wolverine. You know, and I'm looking at this dude. I'm like, he could be the you know who they had in mind when they created this Wolverine. I'm sure many of you all saw the movie Wolverine, so forth and so on. What do you think this guy had in mind? Which one came first, the chicken or the egg? You understand the rabbit or the egg? It says what we're waging is a cultural war. Get that? A what type of war? A cultural war on every front, um, on every front in music, in literature, utilizing, remember before you talk about science and technology before, that, that different individuals in different, in different areas, different fields, different expertise. Now he's talking about in music, in literature, utilizing what? The media against itself. They're waging, they recognize they're waging a war. You know, when we listen to Bob Marley's um, rendition of the King of Kings, uh, word, sound, his utterance, what we know as the war speech, and his imperial majesty says that um, we will fight if necessary as we are confident in the victory of good over, of good over over evil. Now, when you read that speech or you hear Bob do his rendition of um, war, it says, until the philosophy, he, there, there, there are nine untils. Yes, we counted them. There are nine untils. And it was until all these, these nine, this idiot, is fulfilled, there will be no peace. And we should not delude ourselves. You know what I mean? Delude ourselves in the false sense of security, you know, like a lot of these sellouts, you know, these lost sheep sellouts, they're being deluded, lulled into, we can see that happen with Whitney Houston on a certain level as well, as well as a lot of other ones, you know, as well. They, they, have the, the, they have the ability to get out. People say that they couldn't get out, you know what I'm saying? But I think that when you got in so deep, you know, the deeper you're in, the longer the way you have to go to reach the door. In other words, the, the, you know, the deeper you go in, you know, and you might lose your way once you go so deep inside the labyrinth or the maze. So hear what this, this Verwolf, Verwolf is saying. What we're waging is a cultural war right now on every front in music and literature, utilizing the media against itself. Uh, what we're trying to do is bring back a resurgence of the Western European tradition. Stop. Bring back a resurgence of the Western European tradition. See, we've been telling folks that all this Satanist this shit and the rest of that, it's just another aspect of white supremacy. It's probably like, you know, it's probably like their CIA or Pentagon or something of white supremacy, you know, on the spiritual. Remember what, what the Bible teaches us is a spiritual warfare, what Ephesians prepares us for, to put on the full armor of God. You understand the full armor from, from breastplate to helmet to the shoes to, to every, the sword, don't forget the sword, put on the full armor of God because we're in a spiritual you understand, a spiritual warfare. So they're seeking to do what? To revive, you know, Western. Notice what they say, Western. Well, what about the Eastern Europeans? That, that's the Russians. Oh, yeah, you forgot they have black Russians. So it's, it's a white supremacist. It's basically strictly a white supremacist agenda. Now, here in Ikael's um, work that he had put forward that we had, um, read a portion of um, the voice of the precepts. He has a section here, the revival of the Roman Empire. Daniel 9.27 is therefore the cornerstone of the understanding or overstanding, if you please, of the final events of the period of world history known in Bible prophecy as the times of the Gentiles. You know who's a Gentile? I'm pointing to a Gentile. He's a Gentile. What he's trying to revive is the roots of Gentile world supremacy or white 
supremacy, in other words. He wanted to revive the Roman, the Greco-Roman um, um, culture, ethos, civilization, basically, biblically, the times of the Gentiles, i.e., the present period of world domination by the white race, the Anglo-Americans, by the English, namely the English and um, the English-German, the Germano-English influence. Now, the key word is the covenant that shall be made between Israel and her ancient enemies, Egypt and Rome, America. Now, that covenant is what we have in all these artists and entertainers and politicians and pastors and preachers selling their souls to the so-called um, Luna Nutties. You understand the Luna Nutties? That's when they transform, like the Vevels, right? He transforms at the moonlight. You call them Illuminati, but they're the Luna Nutties. You understand? They get nutty. You understand? When the moon and they do their thing, they're lunar. You know, a lot of their rituals depend on that. Yovas then goes back to their um, Western European um, uh, demonic traditions. Quote, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah, shall Christ, even Christ in his kingly character, be cut off, but not for himself. It's not him that did something wrong. And the people of the prince shall come. They interpret this to be Rome. Shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. What happened in 70 A.D. before some of us fled into Africa, into East Africa, then crossed the river of Ethiopia and then went to West Africa, built some kingdoms, Hebrew kingdoms, Mali, Songhai, and, 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 and I think um, Timbuktu, before, you know, before the Arabs and, and, and the, the Europeans and the sellout um, Africans who were our color, black people, but not our kind. They were not Hebraic people. Um, so they shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, the destruction of the temple in 70 A.D., Tisha B'Av, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And to the end of the war, desolations are determined. You see that? So from such a time as speaking about there was a war, there's been a spiritual war fear going on a long time. But you see, um, we peoples, our ancestors, were were so much carnal in the flesh and so I, I, I can say immature that they were not really engaged. This this, this is before the illumination of the great illuminator Kedemawi Haile Selassie, which was what freed us. Not Abraham, no Lincoln, Continental. You understand? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. How many days are in one week? Seven, right? So remember that number seven. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination. That's what all this stuff we see going on and watch these kind of videos and see, see, see who's who, what's what, and who sold this. This is all abomination, people. He shall make it desolate even until the consummation. That's the fulfillment. There's a certain time period that is set, and that heavens, see, they study the heavens. You know why the Europeans study the heavens? Because it lets them know how much time he has and, and, and how he has to speed up and do certain things. You understand? And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now, the beast is the historical personage of this era. Um, Antiochus Epiphanes, he foreshadowed this one. He was a foreshade, a shade, a shedding from before. And he's identified for us all in Daniel chapter 7. There we learn that the first head of the world empires which began the period of ascendancy of the white race was actually, or the Indo, to, to putting it in the historical context, generalized white race, historical Indo, the Hindu, the Hindi, the Hindu European, or the Indo-European, that 
kingdom was Babylon of Chaldea. If you look up Chaldea, you'll find that Chaldea means the demon people. You'll, and what's interesting, too, you have the Kemarims. The Kemarims are a false type of priests that are mentioned in the prophets who wear black. If you look that up, it says that they wear black. So when you start to study all the elements and you put it together, you'll be like, they're just talking about these Satanists and, and all this, all this, um, 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 jubila, jubila, jubilonati stuff, you know, that's going on. But that kingdom, Babylon of Chaldea, of the demon people, was 626 to 561 B.C. Nothing to do with Namrud or Nimrod. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about we're talking about what Bible prophecy is speaking about, not what some fake, fake ass, so called um, whitewash Europeans who are who are not even are not even repentant because they still have racist hearts and so called are ministers of Christ and can't speak the truth. Followed by the world empires of Medea and Persia. That's why they're looking at Iran. Iran is Persia, Medea. Nine, nine uh, Tyler Perry Medea, but, but the other Medea, the, the, the land Medea, that's your Iraq. That's Iraq. So, so this was a joint kingdom. So what they've done is they attack one portion of this kingdom, and now they're gearing up to attack the next portion under a pretext of some nuclear, some nuclear um, um, technology that they're afraid that's going to be used against the Jubilat, Jubilat, Jubilon Jews, right? 550 B.C. to 323 B.C., that's Medea, Persia. Now you have Greece comes next. Then you have the Federal Republic of Germany or Alemania. Then you have the Franks or France. Then you have the Denmark. And then you have Belgium or Belgium. Bell, Bell, right? You see a lot in the name when you study it. Okay, now which nation is more eminent to fulfill this portion of prophecy than actually the United States, United Snakes of America? They're the ones who are eminently in the position to fulfill it. But if you go back uh, roughly around the same time as this interview, the Satanist interview that we're watching, and you start listening to some of those whitewashed preachers, you begin to suspect that some of them are part of the Church of Satan, too, because you will hear them, right, talk about everything's going to happen over in Europe. Keep looking at Europe. While what was really happening was over here, they, they, they were doing that magic trick, you know, like where the magician make you look at the woman or look over here, look at the lady in red or something like that, and that's what gives them time to do their trick or right in front of your face, you understand, but you don't see it. So the U.S., the United States is... Is, is a little over 200 years old, basically a mere baby, the virgin daughter of Babylon, you understand, a mere baby in terms of so-called world history when compared to the so-called British and French and, and definitely when compared to um, um, Rome, you know, or the, or the, or the Bati, the, you know, the Bati clan, the, you know, Daniel... He envisions this young um, Dennis the Menace, the character, according to Ikael, he, he characterized it as this Dennis the Menace that's rooting up the earlier supremacy of the three kingdoms. So there, there'll be a young kingdom that will come up and would uproot, you know, like a young upstart, uproot the supremacy of the three kingdoms. That's why the Bible says, before whom... There were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. You know, plucking up a horn, you know what I'm saying, out of, out of a living creature. You know what I mean? Can you imagine how painful that is? It's more than picking a hair out. You understand? But um, three of these kingdoms are plucked up, Britain, France, and West Germany, and establishing full leadership and dominion leadership and dominion. So we, we are seeing this all work out right now as we watch this whole economic crisis. The economic crisis is a part of, is a part of bringing, you know, in their plans of bringing their counterfeit, their counterfeit new world order, their new world order to be. So let's, 
let's just go forward with this. And all the lost in the world. And we're using music because that's the, that's the instrument that young people respond to right now. We're doing propaganda directly to awaken the wolf in man. Did you hear that? They, they are using the music. They are doing propaganda, shamefacedly, bold, direct, just telling it like it is, directly to awaken the wolf. Now, those who are familiar with the ancient types, you know, um, with the ancient narrative, you know, um, when John says in his word that his people are stubborn and rebellious, like 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 dumb niggas that don't want to get it, that don't want to hear it, that 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 want to deny it, even though all, all the signs, all the facts are pointing positive, but they don't want to wreck it. They want to still live in their so-called dream. But when you get beyond that and you start to really see the ancient archetype, you know, in fact, um, the wolf and the dragon are linked, you know, are linked both in the the heavenly um, cosmology and the signs, Genesis 1 and 14, you know, for a source and a reference. So some, some um, foolish um, placebo Christians won't think we're talking about like, you know, worshiping the host of the heaven. No, the host of the heaven worship us because we are Jah's sons. We are Jah's, Jah's stars. You understand? Just like he said to Abraham, you understand? but those signs in the heaven are, are witnesses. So we see within the psalm, I was just, I was just actually, I touched on that in my, um, in my, uh, commentary that I'm working on, the commentary to um, to uh, Bullinger's to Bullinger's let's see if I have that part right here yep, we have it right here right here, let me just give you that part right here, it says um, it's, it says, it's talking about Draco, the constellation Draco, within the prophecy, and it says that this is exactly what is foreshadowed by the constellation Draco its name is from the Greek and means trodden on. Draco means trodden on. That's why they have that symbol of the snake with his body cut apart. You know what I'm saying? Because they know that's, that's what John is going to do to them. But then they say, don't tread on me. But then when we go to the Genesis prophecy, it says that the seed of the woman will trod on the head, on the head of the serpent. So Draco means trodden on as the Septuagint of Psalm 91 and 13, the young lion and dragon shalt thou trample under feet. This is from the Hebrew. The Hebrew is um, Dahrah. Dahra, 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 or Drah, Drah, Dahra, or contracted to Drah, which means to tread or to try. Now, we had noticed, you know, while adding the Amharic as part of our commentary and annotation so we can study um, this wonderful work that um, um, Edward Bullinger had did called uh, Witness of the stars, and we should we could show you some of the um, some of the the constellation like drawings of the stars where you can see see how this is is part of what the Bible you know the Bible uses a lot of symbolic language when it says like like the wolf the difference between the wolf and the sheep so and the difference between Western European values and Judeo Christianity so this is further proof that these are ones who know their true so-called Canaanite and, 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 and Gentile, you know, roots, that they know that Judaism and Christianity are really African, are really black, and they come out of an African and a black spirituality. You know what I'm This is one reason why they don't really respect these white folks talking about all this Christianity and even the Judaism thing, but they, you know, they can't go too hard, you know, against the synagogue, 
right now. You know what I'm saying? But um, this is just an important point right there about the Tequilana and how the the King James, we put this note that the Authorized and Hard Bible of H.I.M., Haile Selassie, the Maori Haile Selassie, correctly reads and renders the wolf instead of the young lion as the King James Version reads, how be it falsely and in error. So this, we'll get more into this wolf, this wolf type, you know, because it's a very, it's, it's a very well-known ancient, um, uh, I can we say this, like, like a hieroglyph in Egypt, it would have been a hieroglyph, you know, um, within language and in um, a cult or religious kind of, it's, 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 a par, it's parabolic, you understand, know but in order to properly interpret it, you know, like even the link with the moon and the luna, and instead of Illuminati, Luna Nutties, you understand? Know because how is the wear, the werewolf always portrayed? Like somebody does something crazy, they say, oh, it was a full moon. Like the moon made them, made them do it. You, you know what I mean? Because they are in some coven or they are in the occult. The symbol of Western European power and fury, and that's why we use the werewolf imagery. You see that? You see, he, 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 he just he just said it right there. Let's just rewind that for a moment. He just said it right there. Because that's the, that's the instrument that young people respond to right now. We're doing propaganda directly to awaken the wolf in man, because the wolf is a symbol of Western European power. He said the wolf. You see what I'm saying? That is why for years and years and years we've been bombarded with so many werewolf movies and even in latter times, you know, movies where it's like, love the werewolf. The werewolf is a nice guy. He just has a little problem. Learn to un sympathy for the devil. You know what I mean? Sympathy for the devil. They've been using the music, as he says, to get through to the young people. And we see how it's still working very well. They have people in all sort of, you know, all sort of fields. You know what I mean? And we know them. How will we know them? Not because they look like him with blonde, you know, dirty blonde hair or whatever like that. No, we will know them by their fruit. That's what the Master, our Black Lord and Savior, Joshua, Hamoshia, that's what he has, 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 has taught us. You know, and that's how he has instructed us. So he comes out right here, this Shrek. Shrek comes out right here, and he just cuts the chase. He says the wolf is symbol of white man. The white man is the wolf. You understand? He could have said the goat because the goat is another symbol. Biblically, it's also used probably a little bit more overtly than the wolf symbol, but we have the wolf symbol in, 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 in Scripture as well even when christ said what wolves in what sheep's clothing you understand so if if he's distinguishing the western european tradition you understand to be the satanistic tradition and just what we're seeing more and more in society this is why you have blacks blonding them here living in the image trying to be like be like so-called the fake mike you know all all all, all they you know doing what they will then the opposite side must mean that Judeo-Christianity is not a Western European, it's not a European thing. So therefore, when we see all of these folks, you know, saying, trying to play Christian or pretend Christian, but can't identify that Christ was an Ethiopian, woolly here, he was a black man, these are the very wolves in sheep clothing. They might be so-called... Um, um, well intentioned, but well intentioned and wrong, but wrong. So we see how these these types can be and should be interpreted. So the wolf is the European. Respond to right now. We're doing propaganda directly to awaken the wolf in man, because the wolf is a symbol of Western European power and fury, and that's why we use the werewolf imagery. Power. I understand. Power and fury. 
Make sure you understand that. You know, make sure you. So when the King of Kings and Bob Marley sung War, don't just take it as a nice little song to just smoke some weed to. It's a, it's an anthem. It's like a trumpet. The evolution of this, that uh, your music is getting more into the. Our, our music, well, I wouldn't say political because we transcend politics. Politics is literally the puppet show of human beings. And we see now, see the Rastafari on that level, I'm talking about, um, you know, generational, previous generation of Rastafari. They had that part correct when we said politics, politics, you know, to trans, you know, to transcend that. Even when people would try to say, well, his majesty was in politics. No, he's a statesman, never, never no politician. You understand? Politicians maybe wanted to work for him, but he's a statesman. But we transcend that politics. Not that we are interested in the control of human beings for our own purposes. You see that right there? They're interested in the control of human beings for their own purposes. So you wouldn't think these people would use the media to mind control people, do you? Today's absolute swill. It's designed to keep young people passive, restrained, and it's designed to tame them and keep them into sort of domestic sheep. I would separate young people today into two breeds. There's predators, which are the wolves, and there are the sheep, and that's most of them. And we appeal to an elite. We are, frankly, an elitist organization. Mm. We seek a few excellent people. We don't want a lot of drafts. We don't want a lot of mediocre followers. What we want are people who are capable of action. You see uh, a, a lot of, uh, you see some elements of what you're talking about in other music. I think the skinhead movement is a very positive step away from the decadence of the rock and drug culture that has dominated the youth so much. But as Adolf Hitler said, we seek to bring about a youth that has closed its heart to pity. All of the humanist values that Judeo-Christianity has encouraged, we want to wipe them out. It's led to democracy. Do, 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 do you hear that? Do you understand how serious this is? So when these artists are just doing it just for some paper, you know what I mean, or for some gold or silver that basically come from Africa, you know what I'm saying, which is their, which is their inheritance in the King of Kings and his Christ, do you not see what they are doing? They're virtually committing suicide. But once again, we, 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 we have been warned about this in prophecy as well. What we need to do, each of us, is as what Joshua said, decide this day who will you serve. Will you serve the King of Kings? in and through our Lord and Savior, Joshua, Jesus Christos, or will you take the mark of the beast? We want to just rewind this. Because we're about to wrap this, this up here, but let's just rewind this to what he says about the two classes. That's very, very interesting. And remember, he said that the... He said that the, 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 the wolf typifies the what he would say is a true white man. You know, like what what Hitler was talking about, the the blonde hair, blue eyed, you know, that pure Aryan so called um mythology of, of of these folks here. So if that's the white man and he says there are predators, wolf and the sheep, what who do, who identifies with the sheep? The woolly hair. You understand? The the sheeple. You understand who need a shepherd. You understand the King of Kings and His Christ who need a shepherd. You understand should stop trying to be their own shepherd. They're shepherding themselves to the slaughter. They need the King of Kings, the teachings of His Majesty. But hear, hear this again. This is really the puppet show of human beings, and we transcend that. But we are interested in the control of human beings for our own purposes. Mm. Music of today is absolute swill. It's designed to keep young people passive, restrained, and it's designed to tame them and keep them into sort of domestic sheep. I would separate young people today into two breeds. There's predators, which are the wolves, and there are the sheep, and that's most of them. And we appeal to an elite. We are, frankly, an elitist organization. We seek a few excellent people. We don't want a lot of drafts. We don't want a lot of mediocre followers. What we want are people who are capable of action. 
this is a, a lot of, uh, you see some elements of what you're talking about in other music, which I think the skinhead movement is a very positive step away from the decadence of the rock and drug culture that has dominated the youth so much. But as Adolf Hitler said, we seek to bring about a youth that has closed its heart to pity. All of the humanist values that Judeo-Christianity has encouraged, we want to wipe them out. It's led to democracy, social humanism, the idea of equality. All of this filth has to be wiped out if the human race is going to continue to take the next step in evolution. Now, see, when he says human, you got to note that right there. He means white people. They already learned that, you know, that they can't, it's a guerrilla warfare. We caught that in the last video. So they're not going to frontally deal with that and, and expose themselves to that. You understand? So when you see what their, what their unbiased agenda, you know, their clear, unveiled, should we say, um, is biased, but unveiled agenda is all about, it's very, very clear that what we're talking about is white supremacy. So Satanism basically is white supremacy and so-called uh, black folks, you know what I'm saying, are lost sheep. Sheep who are into are just are just lambs ready for the slaughter or are or, or wolf in sheep clothing that are really sent back, you know what I'm saying, into the sheepfold to get sacrifices for their master. That would be like, in, uh, if you're in, in control, just the way your attitude is towards your own people, then we are in control. Hmm. Because basically, we are not a political organization, we are an occult organization. We are working behind the scenes to manipulate the way that people think. The war that we are waging is a guerrilla war on the human mind. And we use musical frequencies, the dominant frequency, which I referred to before, and symbolism and imagery to awaken dormant aspects of the human mind. The war that we are waging is a guerrilla war on the human mind. Mm -hmm. And we use musical frequencies, the dominant frequency, which I referred to before, and symbolism and imagery to awaken dormant aspects of the human mind. The Church of Satan has chosen Satan as its primary symbol because in Hebrew it means adversary, opposer, one to accuse or question. And we see ourselves as being the Satans, the adversaries, opposers, and accusers of all spiritual belief systems that would try to hamper enjoyment of our life as a human being. Founded in San Francisco, California by Anton LaVey in 1966, the Church of Satan sees belief in God or hell as delusional, and so they choose to practice self-reliance and self-worship. Yes, we very selfish. We believe in greed, we believe in selfishness, we believe in all of the lustful thoughts that motivate man because this is man's natural uh, feeling. You're going to be a sinner, be the best sinner on the block. You're going to do something that's uh, naughty, do it. And realize that you're doing something naughty and enjoy it. Did you realize how pitiful that is, what you just asked me? On Earth, everywhere you go, the temperature is 75 degrees. Everything is the same. All the people are exactly the same. And what kind of life is that? Well, that's that's so bad. Well, you want to go back. Because it's not too late to change it. <laughs> Who do you have, though? Well, there's hardly any more disease, there's no more poverty. Everybody's out of the job. That's right. Every time we have the argument, you say the same thing to me, you give me the same three answers all the time, the same thing, well, everybody has a job, that's always the last one. But you know what else? There is no more, my friend, there is no more beauty. And there's no more imagination. And there are no frontiers left to conquer. You know why? Only one reason why. One reason why the same attitude that you three guys are giving me right here in this room today, and that is nobody cares. Oh. So my people, come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon before it is too late. And I say to my brothers and sisters, in the name of Kedemar, we hallow Salati and Jesus Christos, Shalom, Ras 
Teferi. Is a recluse who grants no interviews and makes no. <coughs> I got my 